Last time on Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater. Osk and Ramses defeated their Naga captors and reclaimed their stolen equipment before returning to the Material Plane and made a mud hovel to rest in in the infinite sands of Kelnar. Arlok's Pachiman snuck away from his friends sleeping in Cersei's witch hut and headed back towards Covenston, while Alec and Juwan decided to sneak off together later that same night and headed towards Nevercrooks, but after being diverted by a cabal decided to check out a nearby dome city called Foe, but didn't receive a very warm welcome there. And now, Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater continues. I mean, no one will talk to us here. This is sad. I don't know what to do about this. Besides leave. Like, no one... Uh, I was going to say, I got a natural 20 on something. Some kind of perception. Alright, so, uh... You guys will go, let's say you go back to the guard gate and start asking questions there, because those guys seem to be the most talkative to you. I'm the only people that will talk to us. Alright, so you go back to the guard gate. The guard greets you again. Um, you guys can roll a perception check when you arrive back at the guard gate. 25. Uh, 18. Alright, so you guys uh, will see a sign that reads, Foe, come on in, we're open. But there'll be warnings beneath the sign that any purchases you make in town must be used here in town. You'll be unable to leave with anything that you did not enter with. Uh, the town guard is not responsible for any items you leave behind upon exiting the city. You know, that's all. These are all rules. Things written on the sign now. They'll have signs promoting their excellent topiary and their gardens, and they advise you to visit the gardens. All right. I guess let's tell them we went by and like checked out the gardens or whatever. But that was the only thing that we could see. Like, can like be be honest with me here. Like, why yeah. won't anyone talk to us? Are we the wrong kind of creatures? Do we? Like, need to take a shower? Are we the wrong alignment? Like, what's up? It says, uh, it says there's, some people are just shy. No, no, you don't understand. It's not some people, it's everyone. You know what's up. He says, well, I just get paid to guard, ma'am. I want to buy stuff and I can't. Like, what? He says, well, you're welcome to buy things. You just can't leave town with anything that you buy. Yeah, I understand that plainly written out rule. But I wanted to buy something, but nothing is open. And people are closing their doors. Right. He'll 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 give you a map of the market district and suggest you try these shops. He lists the broom closet, Larry's fine jewels, the container shop, the tool shed, Shady's house of candles, the rug warehouse, Roos's toys and games, Stuffin's pharmacy, Newton's gifts and collectibles, Hal's house of mirrors, Gary's shoes, and Klepp's clothes and accessories. We can't leave with anything that we buy. So you can go look around, you can window shop, you can buy stuff and use it here in town. This place is a waste of time right now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I would like to thank them for showing us their, their uh, topiary. Beautiful. Loved it. Yeah. But Killer I think we should leave. Alright. So you guys leave the city of Foe. Upon exiting, uh, you'll notice above the door a sign <laughs> written in a strange glyph. Can I ask the guard what that says? He says, Can you translate uh, that to common for me, please? He says, oh, I don't know. I just get paid to guard the place. He says, if you can figure it out, um, you know, I'm sure it'd be worth your trouble. I mean, I don't have a way of doing that. Like, how, how has no one told you about... That's obviously, like, some kind of sign you're supposed to enforce. And you... He says, oh, that sign's been there since they constructed the city, since the founders did, thousands of years ago. He says, uh... If you read over there on the, that plaque about the town history, it says the city was founded by a bunch of wizards. It says we think that's some sort of wizard code. It says that's lost a long time ago. There are no great wizards like the like the like in the old days. None of us can read that stuff. Part of me wants to put my hand onto this glass globe thing and do dispel magic. Yeah, I'm curious. On the outside, though, right? You guys go back out the door. Yeah, I guess can I like touch? Um, Alright, so whenever you touch this glass, the haziness sort of goes away, and you ins you see uh, through the glass to what looks like an entirely different city than the city you just saw. It's an illusion, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> you see a great wizard city still existing within this glass. At least where your hand is, there's like a certain area that becomes clear. And you see through the glass to the real city, which is a great wizard city. You see wizards walking around in wizard coats and like all kinds of crazy magic shit going on, and weird spires and wizard towers and... Stuff that was nothing like the city went. Like. Um, you see much less topiary here. There still seems to be lots of gardens and plants and stuff, but much less about the gardens here. And the, the city you see through the glass now. So the, even the buildings look different. Yep. I say, I say it to you, um, Juan. Uh, it's like, do you time level? Do you think this is, we're seeing two different 
different times? Oh. Or a different dimension? Or like... I don't think it's a different a dimension. Path? I think it's just... You like guys can roll Knowledge Arcana to try and figure it out. I think it's just a spell that wizards have cast to make this look like a very unassuming city that's not yeah, worth attacking right and pillaging. Yeah. Yeah. Roll Knowledge Arcana, you can maybe figure out what kind of magic is being used to... Well, I've got Detect Magic. Can I do... Does that... Yeah, it'll only tell you the strength and the where it's at. Oh, I so mean, I already you. know that it's yeah. magic, obviously, from yeah. dispelling it. I know that it doesn't exist. You know it's strong magic, because it's affecting a very large area. So, Arcana... And your spell's only able to, like, do a very localized... You guys are getting, like, a hand-sized, like, a little ring so around... So I get 15. I have to go get my charger. Viewing screen. Yeah. I yeah. You guys are getting a peephole into the city is all you're getting with your magic. No, I'm joking. I'm going to do a knowledge Arcana. Yeah. I don't know more. Roll it. I got 14. Alright, so 14 and 15, so maybe you guys alone couldn't have got it, but maybe you spend some time discussing what you both think. And at the end of your discussion, it seems like maybe the city that you were in is some sort of illusion, like it wasn't real. And you guys are looking at the real city, and wherever you guys went was false. Something about it seemed fake, like the fact you couldn't interact with people and couldn't, you know what I mean? Like that would have been too hard for the illusionists, whoever were doing it. So they gave you the most simple environment they could walk, could to walk around in. Yeah, I wonder if we go back inside if it's going to look exactly the same. I, I like it now. I'm much more curious about this. Yeah. I, I like it. So we go back in. Yeah, so it makes me wonder if, like, the... Why the door's closed in front of you? You push the door open again? Hang on, maybe if we try to sneak back in, then yeah. they won't turn on the magic? The guards seem to have no other purpose other than to open and close the door. They seem to be, like, pulling some very large levers to open this door. It's a mechanical process. Like, this door opens and it closes. That's all these guards do. Well, since it's not forbidding magic, it's just asking you nicely not to use it. Let's use some non-offensive or non-attacky magic. I mean, you're outside yeah. the city now. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Inside the city, they ask you to well, Brian, I'm talking about when we go back okay, in. Okay, yeah, yeah. God. Um, all right. Because... Oh, shit! I got read magic. Okay. Oh, can shit! I that to, uh, oh, I have read magic, too. Can you use that on the glyph? Uh, no, because it's not a, it's not magic, it's not like a scroll, it's not magic, it's just written in like a secret wizard code. Alright, so what's what the magic when I, words. It says you decipher magical inscriptions. These inscriptions are not magical. It's a like, code. It's, you can use linguistics, maybe. Deciphering? Linguistics, linguistics would help you more than read magic would in this instance. Right. I don't have it, but I, I'll roll it. 17. That's pretty good. So 15. Oh uh, yeah, so you guys need, also, this are not great. But I'll say that you do see uh, two of these letters from this glyph repeated um, on some of the other signage. Like a lot of the other signage has like uh, one line written in common and then like a little bit written in this glyph. Um, and the place you see this mo the most common is the city name Fo, obviously the first two letters of this glyph. Which is what looks like a very square C and then a very square C with a dot in the middle. You just can't read the rest of the glyph. You, will, not you will notice there's another C in the glyph. Uh, third to the last letter of the rest of the glyph. Can we see the inscription again, please? Or O. You know that O repeats. You see F-O is the first two letters. And there's another O down there. I like how Cass is telling the truth on these guys, but huh. they would they would know that they have it on them. They know I would have cast a spell. There's a man. I've asked you politely not to do that. Yeah. This town... I'm, I'm more curious about it than anything. Yeah, I'm trying to... I mean, you can go back in and, and visit those shops, look around, do some more investigating. Yeah, Maybe, like, cast some non threatening spells in secret there, that kind of stuff. Do some stealth spells. You guys go back in the city. Mm -hmm. so go back into Foe. Uh, the city looks the same. So, wait, there was, like, a, a clothing and accessory shop, right? Yeah. Let's go, let's go there and see if they have some kind of, like... Clef's clothes and accessories? Goggles of true-seeing kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, you guys go past the inn and the faux bar. Oh, man, um, there's a faux bar here? Yeah. Dang. There's a bar? Yeah, it's called the faux bar. <laughs> I like wanna, I'm going to take an immediately beeline and go check that out. Like, right. oh, sorry, I gotta go Alec, Alec the walks into the bar where you head towards the clothes shop. Do you follow him or do you keep going towards the clothes shop? Um, I think we should stick together. There's not that many of us. All right, I'll so you head into the bar. The uh, bar it's just but... you guys and the bartender. the hell? I go, uh, drinks for us, please. And, uh, how much, how much, uh, I want to know what drinks they have. Sorry, first. Oh, they have uh, all the same drinks as most like normal bars. I mean, they have a pretty, pretty uh, broad menu. Imagine, uh, the perfect bar list for you, Alec. It has, they have everything that you would want to order on the menu. It's cool. like they, it's uh, like they knew what you would want to order and they have it available for you. I'll get that gross dirt stuff that I had in, um, Dirt Town. Okay, you get the, the mud drink. They have that. Yeah, 
Oh, can I ask them separately what they have? Yeah, they have all your favorite drinks, too. And I'm going to turn like, to Alec and be like, isn't that a coincidence that uh, they have all your favorite drinks and then all of my favorite drinks? I don't really know what my favorite drinks are. That's crazy. Like, as I drink these. <laughs> drinks. Yeah, yeah. So does this dirt drink do anything bad to you? Do they have, like, do you have, like some kind yeah, of it does herbal tea or something? Yeah, they'll serve you up some herbal tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the mud stuff usually does do something bad, but this time it doesn't do anything bad. You're just drinking. You feel like you're just drinking. You feel slightly intoxicated, but not a lot. You feel like mildly intoxicated after drinking several of these, and Juwan will sip her tea. You'll notice that you, at some point, have like plateaued, being you can't seem to get any more intoxicated. You're not drunk. You're just like sort of buzzed, and you can't. You drank a lot of these things, and you can't seem to get past buzzed. Um, cool. Can I see if I can make some small talk with the bartender? So I'd be like, uh, hey, uh, lovely topiary you have here. Uh, not very friendly town, though. He says, some people are just shy. <laughs> some people uh, are just magical illusions created by wizards. He said that out loud? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that out loud. All right. I he'll, start my drink like that. Yeah. I'm gonna do that, like, he'll say, he'll say, uh, meme, I'm, like, he'll say, are you calling me, thing. are you calling me an illusion? No, oh. I said some people says, well, I, I feel like you're trying to insult me and uh, you're a stranger in my town. He says, now, he says now I know I no one will talk to you. No, I'm not saying you. I'm saying the people that have just, like, com- like completely not wanted to even talk to us. So anyone all. that doesn't want to talk to you is an illusion. Is that what you're saying? It sounds no. like you've got a pretty big ego, lady. Coming to my bar, drinking tea, talking, insulting the people in my town just because they don't want to talk to you. Is being an illusion an insult? I mean, I feel, like, I, feel like it, I feel like it would be an insult to be called an illusion. I mean, do you have a family and a life that you think you have? What if I called you an illusion? How would you feel if I said you're an illusion? I'd probably want to find some way to prove that I'm not. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. I get that. That seems kind of an insulting thing to call mm. someone. I'm sorry, I'm just frustrated. He says, well, this is, this is a town, it's, it's a locals only type of town. He says, our Smithies is local only, our bank is locals only. Our bureau's locals only, our courthouse is locals only. Our homes are all private. He says, we just like to keep to ourselves. And what about when someone new moves to town? He says, there's no property for sale here. Well, how do you get to be a citizen of this? You just, like, you have no choice but to be born here? And that's it? And that's all that there is? That's the way it's always been. Do people ever leave? They leave my bar sometimes. Browser. It's a very, very private place. Um, hmm. I asked him if the only way to get into town is if I uh, marriage, and then I wink at him. <laughs> Alright, roll me a diplomacy. Alright, 16. <laughs> yeah, he'll laugh, and uh, you know, you've been drinking a lot, so he'll, he'll hear me you and say, uh, I've already got a boyfriend. Uh, I go, I should have guessed, with a body like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very attractive bartender. The most attractive bartender you've ever seen. Ah, uh, with all the drinks. You guys that know this card, uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, Alec has probably spent 20 gold and you've probably spent two juans really drinking tea. Yeah. Over the period of time you guys have hung out here, you've probably spent that much money on drinks. Well, well I'm going to tip him 10 gold and say thank you. Sorry, my friend thinks you're not a real person. I think you're great. Oh, yeah. You guys uh, return to Clef's Clothes and Accessories, located near the bar. So you guys get close and Juwan gets really excited because she can see through the window that looks like a really great selection. But as you're uh, walking up, uh, someone is locking the door and flipping over signs is back in 15 minutes and hurries around the corner. Well, next door is Gary's Shoes, also a great selection. Uh, he seems to be open, though. Gary's Shoes is open next door to Clef's. Clef's is closed back in 15 minutes, but the shoe store is open. All right, well, I guess I'm going to go into the shoe store and find people to talk okay, to. Okay, and I'm going to go to the store next to that. All right, so you go to Hal's, Hal's House of Mirrors? Yeah. It's a, got a well-constructed mirror maze to the entrance. <laughs> uh, and it says, uh, you break, you buy. I immediately turn around. Right. Uh, I've been drinking a little bit. I go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go in the mirror shop. That's probably yeah, a bad but, idea. Oh, the next closest too, store uh, is uh, Newton's Gifts and Collectibles. It has like uh, very expensive, kitschy, up. decorative like, items. I'm gonna turn around and go back to the, the shoe store. Shoe store? Yeah, yeah. You guys walk into the shoe store. Lots of nice shoes, actually. An Al Bundy style salesman walks up. <laughs> He's kind of grumpy to see you. He's like, "Yeah, what do you want?" I just wanted to check out your shoes. So yeah, we got all kinds of shoes from all around the world, all different styles and fashions. You want some shoes? I got shoes. Do you have any magic shoes? See, all of my shoes are just shoes, lady. Do you like shoes that cover your feet? 
That's what I sell. I sell shoes. I don't sell, this isn't Gary's magic shoes, this is just Gary's shoes. If you want magic shoes, go to a magic shoe shop. This is a shoe shop for just normal shoes, for people that just want to put shoes on their feet. Do you know where I could find a magic shoe shop? Gary? I assume another town, lady. You're gonna buy some shoes, or you're gonna, what? What are you doing? No, you're wasting my time. I guess I'm gonna leave. So I could be looking at porn your, in the bathroom. Yeah, I guess I'm not gonna waste your time anymore. Leave, then. All right, you leave Gary's shoes. Hey, yo, should we cast a spell somewhere just to test the waters? Literally, I, maybe uh, create water on some topiary. I just like the word topiary lean, now. Like, lean onto word. the building itself, like the where the um, shoe shot, like as if I'm like resting on it, uh -huh. um, and then do detect magic on the building itself. Yeah, you detect magic on the building. Can I stand? Can I like kind of stand in front of her, like so no one's seeing like? Yeah, block stuff? block the view. I mean, the only people that yeah. seem to be in the area that be watching you are these uh, eight head eight head with eight hedge wizards that seem to be in the area at all times. Every area you guys go in, seem to be at least eight hedge wizards just around you. You guys have been back and forth now. You probably recognize it. Even in the bar, there seem to be eight hedge wizards, Dude, like this... watering the plants in the bar, kind of like hanging out in the area. Can I dispel magic on this uh, thing that I'm leaning on? cast a spell magic, you start seeing what this building really looks like. You see the real Gary shoes, uh, which does have magic shoes in it. So you're leaning against the window and you're looking, through the, you're looking through the window and through the window of the outside of fake Gary shoes, you see real Gary shoes, which does have all kinds of cool boots of escape and levitation and teleportation, all kinds of cool shit in there. Fucking Gary. Has anyone noticed this or are we just like... Oh, oh. Roll a stealth check to see if anyone's noticed you guys doing this. Uh, natural one. So I, I'm probably gonna notice at least Alex. Natural twenty. All right, so uh, Jawan is I'm not the, the one that's doing the spell. Jawan's the one casting the spell, so they don't notice her casting the spell. They do notice you acting suspicious around her, though. So you now notice that these eight hedge wizards are paying lots of attention to you guys after you cast the one spell. Can I try to like open? So I'm, I'm so I'm looking through the window into Gary's. Can I try to open the window? No, it's like a pane glass window on a store, not like a kind of you can. Can you open the window to a shoe store? Any shoe store you've ever been to? Depends on what kind of building the shoes are in, Brian. It is, it's in the normal store style building. You're a normal Can we see Gary? Can we like knock on it and be like, I see you? <laughs> you don't see Gary. You see a, a wizard, a different wizard that's not Gary in that store. You see different people. You even see other wizards shopping. You see lots, you see people in this store that you did not see before. So this is a wizard's only town. Dang it. Can, can I take out a gold coin from my wallet? and tap it on the window and see if I can get some of the store wizard's attention to like show him money like I want to give you money it doesn't seem to do anything you didn't even roll for that you just I, said no because I know they don't care you're tapping one gold coin they against the window want, they don't give well, a shit I'm not going to tap all, I can't tap 5,000 gold coins at once on the window that's ridiculous I have to just do one like I, I have money much. to spend with these they don't respond to that. Uh, they don't seem yeah. to care that you have money to spend. So do lots of wizards. So these guys... I mean, if you guys know anything about wizards, and I think living in this society, you probably <laughs> know that wizards are very secretive, protective of their magic. Um, they're the kind of people that like study magic and learn magic through books, and so they're very protective of their secrets. We like magic. we partial to it. Yeah, I mean, magic's my jam, dog. So you mean even the city will be uh, open to magic users of all kind? You'll be able to understand that most wizards are, don't aren't so like close-minded that they only let wizards into their city. It would, it would be like probably a magic use type of thing because they want to learn from other magicians stuff too. So it's probably like a, a cultural center for wizards from what you guys are. So the fact that, that there are multiple wizards in one area, uh, which is not something you see a whole lot of, like this seems to be like a, a wizard mecca. From at least looking through the window of the shoe store, you've never seen so many wizards in one place in your life, and there's like five wizards in the shoe store. Is this like a Hogwarts scenario? Is there uh, a school somewhere? Yeah, you guys don't see any sign of a school or a library or any kind of that kind of stuff info. Not saying that doesn't exist in the Wizard City, but you don't see yeah. any representation yeah. of that here. You see topiaries and shit. The bar, the inn, the smithy, the bank, the bureau, <laughs> the courthouse, the, there's a pier, a bunch of private homes. Um, you know, those stores, the broom closet, Larry's Fine Jewels, the container shop, the tool shed, Shady's House of Candles, the rug warehouse. Bruce's Toys and Games, Stuffin's Pharmacy, Newton's Gifts and Collectibles, House House of Mary's, Gary Shoes and Clips, Clothes and Accessories, all places. Uh, can we you go guys... to the Collectibles place? Yeah. Uh, so we got, you can see through the window it's got very expensive, very kitschy decorative items like porcelain clowns and shit like that. But very kitschy, very expensive like antique kitschy clowns. 
and unicorn sculptures, and uh, but they have like a, a ring bell for entry sign. And there's like a little doorbell. Ring. You ring the doorbell. Yeah. You receive no Surprise. answer. Yeah. Surprise. Back. Gust of wind. <laughs> That's funny. You can do it though. Did you cast gust of wind? No. Oh. All right. So can I check my tattoo? Is anybody looking at me right now? Yep. I mean, is are my companions looking at me? I, mean, I don't know. Are you looking at her, Alec? I'm probably still looking at it around this topiary, area, man. I'm really digging it. So Alec's not looking at you, but your eyeball's still open. Alec's like poking at this topiary. It's like the best topiary I've ever seen. They're all like very well manned. The plants seem like they're in great, sh you know, the perfect color, perfect yeah. shape. Like Edward Scissorhands style cuts. Like all, there's all kinds of crazy shapes. There's elephants carved out of bushes and like. Giant phalluses, all kinds of things. Anything you could imagine, they have carved in topiary. Actually, I'm exactly what you imagine, they have carved into topiary. Alright, I am going to cast a fog cloud, and then I'm going to change myself to look like one of the wizards that I saw through the shop window. You cast the fog cloud, and it is suppressed. It's like, just the area around you is kind of foggy, and even that seems like very hard to maintain. So it's kind of hazy, like, in the immediate area, five foot around you, like, you know, immediate area is all that gets foggy, not as big as normal. The environment around you, other than that, remains the same. Um, but you then, how do you transform the user to just change face ability as a Kitsune? Yeah. So you change your face to look like the face of a wizard. You now have a beard. Can I go still to, wear the same I don't want to go to the course. clothing store. And it's got to be 15 minutes by now. Yeah, yeah, it has been 15 minutes, but the guy didn't come back yet. The sign's still on the door. Alright, gust of wind. Cast gust of wind. It does not seem to affect any of the topiary, even though you think it would. The topiary remains still. Because the topiary are not real. But none of this is real. So I don't know why. <laughs> you so want from me. I don't know how to. Do you guys it. are in an illusion. I mean, I right now that. you realize you guys are trapped. You're walking around in a fake city. Yeah, I, I don't. I have no idea what to do. Like magic's not going to work. I don't have another dispel magic. I mean, that's only temporary for us to see the things. That but at this point, I think you both realize none of this is real. These topiaries aren't real, these stores aren't real. Of course not. We realize that. I love these people. Um, also, probably like, not real. The ones fleeing from you, that's probably why they can't interact with you. Because, yeah. I mean, like, the only yeah, thing... Yeah, you, yeah, I, I would say, like, at this point in time, if you guys want to roll some sort of knowledge arcana, whatever else you think might work for the situation, I can give you a little more information about what you do think is real. <laughs> Even a perception. Like, if you guys have been hanging out here long enough. You got a nat 20 on knowledge arcana. Yeah. I think at this point in time, the only thing that thing that Alec thinks is real, based on his like natural senses, now that he's been this, he's like, actually, I've hung out with these topiary. I I can definitely tell those are illusion. Now, the only thing he the only thing he thinks is real are those lawn wranglers. Yeah, but the hedge wizards are the only thing that are. The hedge wizards are real, and you think that's probably what's maintaining the illusion. These these eight guys hovering around you all the time, maintaining an illusion around you all the time. I mean, I don't want to kill them though. That's crazy. Yeah. They just seem like gardeners who don't speak your language. They're constantly gardening all around you. Can I do plant growth and just try to make these topiaries just like? You can, get but gigantic. so you cast oh. you cast plant growth. Yes. All right, you oh. cast plant growth. Nothing happens because these topiary aren't real. They're an illusion. They're not real plants. That's why they wouldn't talk to you whenever you try to talk to them. Um, do you want to go try to talk to the guards and be like, hey, we're in the know. Um, we just came here to buy some magical items. Yeah, I mean, I guess we yeah. can try to say that to them. Can All we right. read that history plaque, actually? That's a, let's go back towards the gate. I want to read yeah. what that thing says. All right, you guys go back and read the history plaque. What other information is around? Like, any kind of educational whatever we can get about right. this place. I'd like to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll say this time you guys head back to this, the town, and you notice that from the inside, you know how from the outside of the city, the dump seemed to be very hazy. From the inside, it seems to be mirrored. So you see a reflection of yourself as you approach the gate again to talk to the guards. Uh, are still standing there, ready to open the door for you if you like. Yeah. Uh, you read the history plaque. So you go, it talks a lot about the history of the great wizards that started the town and built the dome to protect them from outside influences and other outside magic and beasts. The great beasts like the Jabberwocky and um, the great wizard research in this town and uh, the master wizard interesting wizard history um, you know their alliance with Covenston during the Great War is Covenston one of the good places or bad places 
I mean, it's the witch town, but I don't know if you guys know anything uh, about it, really. I thought that Alec went there. Yeah, I did. Um, he would know that Covington is a witch city he's been to, and he's like, oh, they allied with these guys during the war. You guys will notice uh, a sign that uh, reads, locals only. What does it say? It says locals only. But this is what it looks like in glyph under above it. So you guys have uncovered another clue to figuring out these glyphs. Can we find more of the signs that are like this that have got both common and this yeah. native language on it so that I can... So this one on the bottom. It says L-O-C... A... L-O-C... Um, at the bottom of the history plaque, you will uh, find the history, uh, a legend that says the city was attacked by a Keketar and Nanet. As they say, that's when the, the great city of uh, Fosi was destroyed and Fo was built. So this is, the, this is the second city, built atop the old wizard, great wizard city. Hold that thing still. Sorry. So according to this legend, the great wizard city was destroyed, the city that you thought you saw through the glass was destroyed, and this is the real city. And it was destroyed by a Kekatar and a Nanette. This is too many letters to be locals only. Right? I know that. Yeah, the second letter would be O, but it's... Uh, I know that. Right. Maybe that's not what it says in the other language. Maybe it's a mistranslation. Maybe oh, part of it's, okay. Maybe part of it's right, part of it's not, but I would need you guys to roll linguistics before I could tell you that, so please roll me your linguistics so I don't feel like a jackass for giving too much clues uh, away. 14. 17. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that. It's what? a mistranslation. You would say, that, that obviously doesn't say locals only, but maybe it says locals something or something only. Okay, well, what it's written, locals only is written in common, right? Yep. Do you want to go in there and just speak different languages and act like we don't speak common? I mean, I the signs, this, this sign, this sign that says locals only, it's written on the door of almost every building in town. All the shops yeah. you go to, this is like, this, this glyph is above all the doors. Only now, oh. going, only now going back to the front entrance and seeing it there do you see it with locals only written above in common. You will have seen this written all over town on every building. Above the entrance of every door is this, these words. So it does have the right number of letters for wizards only. That's the last four is O-N-L-Y? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's all I can guess for now. So maybe you can use that to help you get some of the letters of the first sign to but figure out what it says. Right, not right. Well, I mean, the go. locals are wizards, so... Oh, it is a O. Did you know that's true from the word foe? Yeah. The L's, the L with the dot right above it actually is an L. Conveniently enough. None of the other letters match, though. We've got, like, that. Yeah. We have L, and that's it. Are there no other signs that we've seen that have had common underneath <laughs> this? So if you, you, have to, you guys have to explore more. Sure. I'll tell you that. Right. Well, find the, now the, that if you want to find them, if you want to go around town and look for more of these well, signs. Well, now that we started doing this, I'd like to walk around and see if I could find more. Where do you go? Yeah. The places we have not been yet. All right, that? so you have not been to the broom closet, Larry's Fine Jewels, the container shop, the tool shed, Shady's House of Candles, the rug warehouse, Bruce's Toys and Games, Stuff Whenever, Pharmacy. Let's just go back and just go from one place to another. Yeah, right, so go. Until you go. Until you tell us. All right, you go to the broom closet. They sell like home cleaning supplies. Okay. But not to you, probably. Of you would course. assume. Of course not. What does that sign look like? I'm gonna roll perception. Yeah. Uh, when you guys walk in, they kind of like hit you with brooms and say closing, closing. They seem to also speak in this weird language, like the hedge wizards, and just seem to be like trying to shoo you out of the broom uh, closet. Oh, yeah, but I don't understand you. but I mean, I'll let I you guys roll a perception check to look around the store. Well, I rolled a sixteen. Um, seven and eight, so fifteen. You see an employees only door. In the back of the store. What do the books on that look like? Underneath the employees only sign, C and then a C with a dot in it. So you do see a, a that the same glyph on that door, but it's a smaller glyph. Oh, that's oh. useless. Yeah. Then. All right. It I says was, foe on it. Well, I wanted to. That's what I said when I, when I said that. But the I the, the take foe is written 20. in gold writing on the okay, door. Okay. Okay. When I said I wanted to take a twenty to go around the town and find this last sign that you're hiding from us. All right. You go. I'll deny. Here's what we'll do: go through every town and then we'll uh, we'll go to. I'll do we'll everything. I'll tell you everything. You go to Larry's Fine Jewels. They have fine jewelry of all kinds, but it's apparently by appointment only. And you guys have seen no way on the sign of making an appointment. It just says by appointment only, and you can see through this window all this nice jewelry. Uh, but you see no way of making an appointment. There's no contact information. Okay. Okay. You go to the container shop. 
Seems full of chests, boxes, bags, and bottles. Kind of a boring place. The employees there are not any help, like most of the stores you went to, and you see nothing interesting there. I'm not looking to talk to people. I know, I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm looking just, for I'm, signs. We're right? going through. I know, but this is all the places you're going to do that. So we're going through it because you're taking a 20, so we're going to every place, and this is what we're doing. You go to the tool shed. They got a, It's a very small shack, actually, selling tools. I'll say that in quotation marks because it's home and garden supplies, but of course has that same locals only sign written in the glyph, although not the glyph you're looking for, I guess. Uh, so they won't sell you anything. You guys go to Shady's House of Candles, selling candles, lanterns, lamps. It has like neon lights on the outside, Shady's House of Candles. It's closed and there's uh, neon lights in the window with the sign and stuff. So you sort of see inside because it's lit. So you see a bunch of candles on the shelves in there and because of the neon light you can see a supply closet in the back. And on the supply closet is written another glyph. So you see another glyph on this supply closet door written beneath the supply closet is this glyph. What's the black thing in the middle? Uh, that seems to be one of the glyphs seems to be like have been rubbed off. So you can't make oh, out that the letter. This Supply closet. Although judging by the letters you would judge that was also a mistranslation or a misleading it's probably not what it actually says. I mean knowing wizards, like true sight would be your biggest aid in a lot of this, but Yeah, it's definitely something we have. Thanks, Brian. Sorry you don't have that. A bunch of law enforcement around the whole dozen. These heads of wizards have weird glasses. I don't know anything about that. But. Exciting. That's the thing I was thinking that. I was like, I want to get those glasses. Because um, they yeah, have the little flip-up thing. They look like true scope goggles. Yep. They're wearing, they're wearing Dwayne Wayne true side goggles. Although you don't know that as your character. I'll go and reveal that as the DM. Yeah. Hedge wizards are all wearing flip-up goggles in there. All, whenever they flip them down, we're able to see things as they truly are. While they are maintaining, maintaining an illusion all around you. It does take eight of them to maintain illusion all around you, though, so... Maintaining that kind of illusion is very hard. When it's the size of an entire city. Yeah. Alright, not helpful, still. <laughs> we don't have any of those letters. I'll say that wizards sometimes spell stuff funny. And leave letters out, or use weird letters. But Liz discovered that on wizards only, it's W-I-Z-A-R-D-Z. Wizards only. Oh, they're like rappers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, man. They're wizards. And so this yeah. sign. Half of being a wizard is being successful at freestyle battle. rap battles. Yeah, yeah. You gotta so be able. Yeah, you gotta be able to throw down some verse. Yeah, we, I mean, I could, I'll, I'll let you guys wander through the other stores too, looking. After that, you go into the rug warehouse. They've got rugs of all shapes and sizes. Lots of fine rugs. Really nice rugs. Roosters toys and games. They got cards, dice, toys, games, all kinds of games. Uh, but they act kind of weird that you come in there without having a kid. Um, they ask you know, that you don't touch the toys. No touching, they say, when you go to reach for a toy. So. Can I do a, can I do a sleight of hand and uh, try to touch a toy? Yeah, roll me a sleight of hand and touch a toy. Oh man, it's not good. Uh, it's a eight. Yeah, yeah, someone's, an employee smacks your hand. No touching. They point to the door, they point to the door, like, basically asking you to leave. Which I assume you do. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You got me. You guys go to Stuffin's Pharmacy. Uh, they got pills, potions, and root beer floats. All prescription only, including the root beer floats. Besides the inn, which is just an inn. It's 2,000 it's two gold a night, max two nights. Imagine how hard it is to maintain this illusion. These guys are charging you a lot of money so that you wake up in an illusion, you know. They have to stay awake while you sleep to maintain an illusion. So they charge a lot of money for that. And, um, I'm just gonna... Walk around town until someone tells me I can't do that. Now you walk around town all you want. You'll just be followed by at least four of the hedge wizards. Oh man, as long as I'm making these guys work, that's fine. Yeah, they're having, they're like trying to keep up with you. They're trying to make the ground in front of you appear real all the time and make yeah. the citizens run away just when you get close enough and locking all the doors when you get to the places. And so yeah, you make you make them do their their day's work, maintaining an illusion around you while you ponder your mind the secret code and how to get to this real city that you know. You've seen it. You know, somewhere within this is a second, a second city. It's like a layer of an onion. Ugh. You can peel away this layer, find another city, a wizard city. So I bet they sell some dope shit there. Yeah. It's a fucking wizard city, but they have the coolest shit in all the game. Gosh, Brian, thanks. Thanks for <laughs> building up this whole thing we came to. That's really awesome of you to do. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what to do. This, I mean, this, the letters that we have in this language are not helpful. And the ones that we've got, we don't know what it says because we don't know what supply closet could be. So, uh, roll me a linguistics, and I might help you with supply closet. I mean, I'm 
I got four letters out of it. Roll me linguistics. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Alex, like, I can't, can't figure this out. I, I don't know the uh, 13. Alright, Juwan's also not much help, but she will notice that one that letter recurs in... The first letter of Supply Closet recurs in the thing on the outside of the city of the Great Door. <laughs> You're willing to take a gamble that that is actually an S. You think maybe it's, this doesn't say Supply Closet, but maybe it is an S word. You're like, I just have a feeling that's an S. You know that in Hangman, the most common letters are R, S, T, L, and E. Is the, hi- is the hyphen in the first uh, the thing above the door, is that a letter, or is it actually a hyphen? You don't know, but it might just be a hyphen. It doesn't look like any of the other letters, if you roll a linguistics yeah, check. Something. I'll tell you that. I'll assume you guys t- you guys at this point are taking 20s, I assume, because you really want to figure this out. Because on the sign above it, it says foe, and then there's a hyphen after the word foe before come on in, we're open. But, you know, foe is the same, and there's a hyphen on both, so you think that might actually just be a hyphen if that's matching what's above. Yeah. At least partially. A lot of these signs seem to partially match what's on the door, but only, especially in the last case, very partially. But now for the third one, uh, the one that was about the supply closet, S Something blank. A D marked out S I L something. Yeah. I'm guessing. I don't know. This thing. But maybe you guys are just noticing this now that you're taking a 20 or notice, because these things are well worn down, hard to see. You guys are looking at you are looking at them from the outside of a window on the inside of these stores. In most cases, most cases where you guys see these, uh, you're outside of the store looking in. I mean, that doesn't really. So you're having a hard time reading them. Do anything You're missing four letters in the top one. If you can figure out those four letters, that's the important one. It could like mean that could mean anything. Swallow on. <laughs> that means nothing though. Like. I know. That's the tricky part. Oh, is that it? Is that the tricky part? You don't say. You guys are playing Wheel of Fortune right now. Are we? This is like, yeah. You're missing four letters from a two-word clue. I'll even let you know it's two words. This is all one word. No, those are two words. That's what I'm telling you right now. I'll give you another clue. That's a nice DM. Uh, It's foe dash and then two words. Spell omen. See, you can make words out of anything. It doesn't doesn't matter. That's why Wheel of Fortune's hard, man. That's why you can make good money on that show. Spell open. Okay. So I think, Alec, can you read this? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go cast, cast a spell on the front door and then try to open it and go back in? I guess. I don't know what spell, though. So there's an open-close spell. Let's leave. This is totally useless for us to be here. Like, we can't do anything yeah. here. Let's go to Nevercooks and get, like, a fucking spell, spell open or something. Like a, or a scroll of that. You've almost got the whole alphabet. I'm actually pretty impressed by how far you've gotten. You're missing like eight letters right now. No, way more than eight letters. Well. Some of those letters don't matter, like X. X matters. I think at the point when it, at the point where it came down to figuring out which letter was X, you could. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it, I mean, I get it. Like, yay, we figured out something, but like, it just. It just I mean, you know, totally not, you could probably guess now. none of those signs on the other signs are X. Hmm. So that again, like, that's not helpful. You guys head back to Nevercrooks? I guess. Yeah, we can't, we can't yes. get into this town. Yeah, hey, you leave Foe frustrated. Completely. You feel like you solved the riddle of how to get into Foe, but you can't do anything about it because you don't have that spell. That's a wizard spell. Total waste of time. So you head back towards Teleport, city of tieflings. A city of lawyers and advocates, uh, lots of courts and bureaucratic type buildings here. They've got uh, a bank, a bureau, homes, a mint. Pier, shops, smithy, tannery, tavern, called Bernie's, a tobacconist, an arena, a hell court, an inn. They got gambling, they got all kinds of stuff, whatever you want to do. They got a shop here if you guys want to shop around. They might have something you might want, but... Let's see if they have a scroll of open somewhere. Yeah, you guys can go to the magic shop. Uh, you can buy a scroll of open here. Let me see how much that's going to cost you. They're going to charge 100 gold for an open, closed scroll. I'll take it and I'll pay for it. Yep. An open closed scroll can open your choice. A door, a chest, box, or a window, bag, pouch, bottle, bear, or other container. As long as you can roll a high enough spellcraft to use this scroll. I'm gonna buy one too, just in case. Yeah. With these, you can pretty much open anything that could be opened. Magically. A scroll comes with a brass key, which is a component of the scroll. So wrapped up in the scroll is a brass key. You have to hold the brass key while you say the words. I cast some technical alignment on Juan real quick while we're here, just in case. Oh yeah, it's probably smart. And yourself. I assume, I assume you did that. You were doing it earlier. 
I might. Do you want to go see if that ponytail guy is still in town? Maybe he has anything to say. Yeah, I mean, I, who is he now? I don't know who he is. Did you catch his name? No, I didn't actually. I just call him Ponytail Guy. That's all I got. He was just, he was just a man with the job. And he's the guy that like gave you the mission to like do something? To drop yeah, off that box to Ponveen. Uh, the frozen wizard. Well, does he owe you money then if you did something for him? He already got paid. Uh, I, got paid. I got paid when the team was dropped off. Oh. Hmm. Cash on delivery. Yeah. C -O -D. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if, if you go see. I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he's definitely not a good person. Like, <laughs> if you guess the mission, chances are it's not. Well, no one got hurt on my last mission. I don't know. Go checking him out. I guess see so. if he's at the fighting ring at least. I mean, I don't know anything about this place, so... I mean, yeah, you've been uh, here before. I have. Never cooks? You came over to Cersei and Brian hung out. You were in the HBI for a short period of time, remember? Oh, that's where the HBI offices are? Yeah, it's in Never Cooks. We didn't go anywhere. We just got taken to the HBI office. So offices. you would recognize the HBI office building. You were there. Yeah, I was like, oh, hey, I know what that is. Yeah. I had an office there. Yeah. But I didn't um, join, so... Yeah, you might remember a guy with a ponytail, though. Your what? boss had a ponytail, yeah. Jagger um, Dyson. Oh! I know him. Oh, I know him from the meeting at the uh, that weird bar. I didn't know that was him. It's totally him. She'll say a guy oh, with a ponytail was his name Jagger. Oh, I was like, oh yeah, I met him at that bar. I was drunk. I should remember that. Got it. I goofed. Oh, that's awful. So uh, Alec well, has met Jagger, and Jagger wants to give Alec more jobs and maybe recruit him to his organization. So he's like an HBI guy, though. So he's like. He's like head of the HBI. Yeah, so he's like with them, yeah. which is probably. But also. I was sent here to, to fuck uh, with the HBI by the phone end, so... You were sent here to what? The best way to get might be by infiltrating. Um, okay. So you guys want to go to the HBI? I mean, Juwan, yeah, we have to, uh, Juwan we can eat in the door. I mean, Juwan yeah. is still technically under the, uh, like, as far as they're concerned, working for them to, like, bring about evil in the world. That's where this, she kind of, she never said she was leaving or anything. They don't know you officially become a blind light guild member yet, or do they? We got two options. We can go... Will our gold back in uh, that town now that we have that open scroll, or we can go talk to Jagger? I guess let's, uh, if we're here, let's go talk to him and see what he wants. Yeah. Like, what yeah. we do. You guys go to the HBI? I guess so. Yeah. All right, the HBI door, they're very large, would look like magical scanning devices. You go through them? Um, uh, no. No, no I, got, I got a blind light guild tattoo. I'm not going to go through that. Yeah, no, yeah that's that'll not probably smart. detect it. This is smart. Yeah. I guess let's go see what kind of money we can blow at this place and find, see what kind of badass stuff we can buy. Well, you, yeah. guys, you guys get to the door of the HBI and you're like, yeah, this is probably a horrible idea. Yeah. And you're like, let's go buy some stuff first and then come back maybe when we're like fully yeah. equipped. Yeah. Get some arsenal first. Yeah. Fill up the arsenal. Alright, you guys just leave town and head back towards Faux. Sure. Take the roll, see anything happens when you're right there. So, uh, as you guys are leaving Nevercrooks, you, uh, have an encounter. Ah. So as you, you guys are leaving the town at night, and these little things come out of the shadows, they seem very vicious, very tiny little skittish amalgam of beast parts with luminous eyes. So you guys see the eyes coming out of the grass, and you guys are across the plains. These very bright eyes come, out, come to you out of this tall grass. They have, like, a rat's tail, sort of like simian appendages and tendrils extending from their mole-like noses. And uh, the reason uh, you saw them coming was because they radiated a 15-foot cone of light from their eyeballs. So as soon as they got within 15 feet of you, they, you know, boom. Like, ah, oh, there's some shit all around us. Would our wild empathy have an effect on these uh, things, or are they... You can try it. 16. It doesn't seem to improve their attitude towards you. They seem to be 10 hungry things that are still heading towards you. So animal trance uses the plural form of animals or magic. <laughs> we'll have to roll for initiative if you're going to cast a spell. These things are coming at you. Well, they're coming at us, I mean... So we have to roll for initiative to see if they're going to attack you first or if you're going to cast a spell first. That's how this works. I'll roll a mass initiative and I'll lose, so I rolled a 5. I also rolled a 5. But what's your, uh, dex? You, you know. 6. So you win. Six, yes. That's only 1. So Juwan just barely gets to go before these moles. What do you do with your little bit of time you have there, Juwan? I'm going to try the animal trance thing. Play motions or singing compels animals to do nothing but watch me. So I can... How long does that last? As long as you can concentrate. So as long as you don't stop singing. As long as you can concentrate on your song. So these things start running towards you guys, and Juwan starts singing a very soothing song. And these things start slowing down and slowing down. 
slowing down. Now they're right at Juan's feet, staring up at her um, with their little, their little mouthy tendrils from their mole-like noses, like lingering about. You can see like the, they seem like a uh, Romeo knowledge nature. Either one of you to see what to, to see if you can identify them. Right. Twenty-one. All right, so Alec has seen these before. He recognizes these as zoobs. Maybe not so much a problem for him because he knows they're a beast that likes to devour flesh, but possibly a problem for his new friend, Juan. If she stops singing, they might try to eat her. They slip between reality's cracks. They, they grow, uh, they don't, not from this planet existent. But you know, they eat fungi and plants, but they have a taste for meat of sentient creatures. Well, obviously I'm singing at them and distracting them so that you can kill them. I got a 20 for me, not unnatural, and then a 21 for uh, uh, Caesar. All right, you guys can do stuff. Swift action, I'm going to do uh, Aspect of the Bull for both of us. I'll cast uh, Shillelagh uh, for myself. All right. And then uh, Caesar will attack the one closest to Juwan. All right. I mean, they're all kind of in a circle around here, but yeah. He'll attack one yeah. of the close ones. Does this mean I can't do any other spells because I'm taking on my concentration? You're concentrating to sing. If you stop, they'll attack you. Okay, well, right now it's the only thing stopping them. Genevieve is going to try and do something. Genevieve, got a natural uh, 20. Uh, 30, 30, 32 for first. That's a hit. And a uh, unnatural 20 for a second. That's also a hit. If you want, I'll let him grab one each. You can grab one on each hand and just like bash them. Cool. Smash them together. Like, they seem tiny, so you seem to don't think that it won't be take much to kill them. But they seem like hungry little buggers. Uh, 12 on the first attack. 14 on the second. Alright, so that kills both of those things, or at least knocks one of them unconscious and kills the other one almost. Two of the ten are bashed. So, Genevieve is going to try to, I don't know, talon them to death. Alright, roll versus AC. Alright, there you go. She gets to do nothing. Alright, she swoops down but misses. There are only eight of them now, but they are distracted by Juwan singing as long as she doesn't stop singing. Even though some of them have been smashed and some of them have sort of been snapped out of it. As long as she continues singing, they won't do anything. So back to the top. Got that uh, quarter staff. Gonna try to hit one with one side and another one with the other. So try to hit two. That's a 30 for uh, his first hit. And a 17 for a second. Uh, both hits. So it only hit seven damage for the first one. And uh, eight for the second. So you damage those two, but don't kill them? Yeah. And then, uh, I guess Caesar's gonna try to attack the, the next two. Alright. 36, hit. Oh, it's only 16 on the second hit. Still a hit. Uh, 13 on the first hit, 15 on the second. Alright, so those are both, uh, unconscious. Got several unconscious Zoogs, two weak ones, and four still fully strength ones staring at Juwan. I wonder if Caesar could eat them. Or your hyena, you can feed thing. him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Fonta, I'll eat him afterwards. Caesar's vegetarian. Uh, nice. uh, it's been established, that's canon. Silverback. So, are they still watching her, or can so I go again? Gonna try as long again. as she's still singing, yeah. Then yeah. he'll swoop down again. So, 14. A melee attack. That's a hit. D6. This is on one of the injured ones. Alright, so you injure one of the injured ones even more. As you talent it. Still is dragging because she's still singing. Roll me a concentration check to keep singing through all this stress. Plus wisdom for you, Jamal. So fourteen. Yeah, that's good enough. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, yeah, nineteen's good. You're still singing. Juwan's still singing, so you can still get to slap around these little things. I forgot her bird was about to attack, and I rolled it already. Did, should I roll again? So I rolled a nat twenty. Um, I'll allow. Like, keep your nat twenty. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so his first attack was 25, his second was nat 20. I'm gonna roll to confirm. And I did not confirm it. So I did 15 damage on the first hit. Alright, that smashes one. So 18 on the second. Yeah. So you have two more unconscious ones. You have four left un uh, four left conscious. Well, Caesar's up. Gonna hit two. 21. Hit. And a 17. Both hits. 18, and uh, two 18s. Alright, so that's two more that are unconscious. After Caesar sort of whacks them about a bit, bops them in the head. Alright, yeah. well, Genevieve, I guess, is gonna try to... And as Juwan continues to sing, Genevieve swoops. Yep, and 
she's going to obviously go after one of the hurt ones. Yeah. That's all that's left are two hurt ones. Everybody else is unconscious. Everyone else is unconscious. There's two hurt ones left. She got a two. It's a miss, though. Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> but you're still singing, so. Yeah. Alex will come in and knock the rest of them out. The hyena just eats them. Yeah, the hyena's gonna like get a, finally get a good meal. He's been hungry for a while, so these things are little. He's probably really excited. Yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't eaten them already. That's good restraint there. Yeah, I got two hits on that one. Yeah, okay, so those are both hits, so do your damage. This will be enough to so smash these two to bits because they're already injured. Oh, bits. Yeah, nine damage on the first hit. Alright. And 13 on the second. Okay, so only one gets totally obliterated. <laughs> so you have nine dead zoo bodies to feed your uh, hyena if you want. They're not poisonous or anything, right? I'm not gonna. No, they don't. I mean, you can roll knowledge nature if you want to know for sure. Knowledge nature. Yeah. Before you do that. So 19 knowledge nature. Yeah. Are they're they not, safe for this animal? They're safe for the animal to eat. Alright, well, oh. while he's eating them, can I do like the total Native American thing to like thank yeah. them for providing their. Their bodies for the yeah. nourishment of this. Yeah. Dire like I said, thing. you would know zoos exist in places where the boundaries between planes are thin, so they probably slipped through some crack and, you know, saw you guys as food. Like, it's, you know, they were just hungry. So, but yeah, can you I, can take rest of their bodies. Can I skin them before I feed them to Lanza? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can roll me a survival check to skin them first. Yeah, there's some, I was gonna say, is there some way to, like, keep their eyeballs and, like, make their eyeballs yeah. into, like, glasses eventually or when something? Well, their eyeballs don't glow unless they're attached to their living bodies, but you can keep their eyeballs for something if you want. Nah. Magic spells or... Zoo, um, zoo guys could be a component in a magic spell. Mm. Probably one that also makes your eyeballs glow. 31 on survival. Yeah, yeah, you're able to skin them first. So you guys, kind of you guys have zoo hides. You, you guys get 1,300 experience each. Um, how many hides did we get? Nine, if you want to take all of them. You'll buy enough, you can get nine of the hides if you want. They're not very large hides. Yeah, but, but I figure they're from a weird place. They're from a weird thing, money. yeah, you might be able to, I mean, that's like a, you know, uh, those mink coats, like they're not very big animals, but you put a bunch of them together, yeah. Yeah. make a really nice coat, this is a weird animal, so it'd be exotic, maybe on the right market, to the right buyer, you could probably get some good money for it. Dang. These are a rare animal. Like I said, they, they, these don't exist in a lot of places, except in places where the fabric of reality is thin, so. Well, and then carry on to or back to foe. Alright, All right, you guys make it back to foe. Okay. You're at the gate. Alright. The I'm doors gonna, are closed. Do you see the inscription above the door? I'm going to whip out the scroll and hold the key. Alright, you hold the key in your hand, you hold the scroll in your other hand, and you read the words on the scroll. Let me spellcraft to read the words on the scroll. Oh, natural 20 plus 5. Oh man, that girl knows the spell, man. She reads spell magic real good. <laughs> she must have went to college. She went to college, right? This is one of your like classes you had to take with a scroll reading. You read that scroll really well. Door opens for you and reveals the city known as Fosi. The city within the city, a wizard hideaway. Fo Fosi. Yep. Uh, as long as you're a spellcaster, which you guys obviously are, you buy guys with cast magic. All the signs here are written in that glyph that we were looking at earlier. So Good every Lord. every sign here is written in wizard's code. So you guys are welcomed in by different guards than you saw before. Wizard guards. The major attraction for wizard is the sharing of information and magical knowledge. A lot of them like to trade. Uh, so what you know is very important here. More important than who you know. Lots of strange uh, ma minor magical items can be created here. So use your imagination. Anything you want built here by a wizard, the wizard can make. Some of our minor magic, I'll allow you to get Tef created here for an amount of money. Same thing as before, they've got a, a, a mirror domed ceiling, but the only difference is here, occasionally you'll see the countenance of the Master Wizard appears, uh, somewhat etherly over the mirror. You know, if a crime is happening in the city, he'll appear, and occasionally as you guys are walking around. It seems like a great place, a lot of magic users buy homes here. Okay. Um, so that's something you could do here, buy a house. They also have a magical academy, a wizard's bureau, uh, a magic court, what they call the Wizard's Rest Inn, the little, little wizard's library next to the little wizard school. They've got a Dazzling Sean's Tavern, which seems to be the tavern here in town. White Wizard Urgent Care, which is their hospital, obviously. Uh, they've got an All Plains Bank and Trust, similar to the one you guys encountered in... The place wherever Demon's we Knot. Yeah, Demon's Knot. Yep, yep. Planes. So very similar bank of many planes. This one's called All Plains Bank and Trust. Very similar bank. Same sort of thing. You can access your money or items anywhere with a fee. Uh, instead of charging you per month, they, desert, they charge a 10% service charge of the value of item uh, withdrawn. They've got a Seyul Brewery. Where they make Wizard's Punch, famous around here. Oh, there's a couple other like large facility, like warehouse buildings, that kind of stuff. 
in the area, okay. like research type labs and warehouse buildings and the kind of stuff you probably wouldn't have access to. But they have so many shops, so many shops. They got a golem shop where you can buy fucking golems and stuff. How about I tell uh, you that? So I don't have stealth as a skill, so I'd like to have some kind of like ring or <coughs> well, amulet or something made that gives well, me a fuck ton of stuff. A lot of the same, a lot of things that you saw in faux are mirrored here, so a lot of the same stores exist. There is still the pharmacy, uh, the Russ's Toys and Games, the gifts and collectibles, the house of mirrors. Right? The, the jeweler the would be the place to me. go to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you find the, the Larry's Fine Jewelries of faux They're still assigned to make an appointment, serious buyers only. He's a very busy crafter. So what he does there is makes jewelry to order. So any kind of so if you want to so that's the kind of thing you need to do. But if you want to set up an appointment with him to make some jewelry to order that'll make you more stealthy, this is the guy to talk to. Okay, we'll do that then. You make an appointment. Yeah, when's the appointment? For? You go inside, make an appointment. Uh, roll me a D. I'll roll it. I'm gonna be in. Tomorrow. Yeah. He'll meet, with, he'll meet with you tomorrow. Killer. To discuss what you need done. This is got an appointment window open. This might be a while before he can finish crafting it, but he can has an, he can set an appointment for you tomorrow to talk about what you need. Oh no! He's not gonna build, it's a wizard. He's gonna craft it in twenty four hours, but he'll set an appointment to figure out what you need and start crafting it tomorrow. So in twenty four hours, you'll be able to talk to Larry fine. of Larry's Fine Jewels. Fine. So Juwan has made an appointment at Larry's Fine Jewels, which she has to report back to in twenty four hours to discuss about the fine jewelry she wants made for her. Yeah, to get my stealthiness up. Yep, so she's gonna try and get some some stealthiness with jewelry. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I could use something. I could use a better quarter staff. Yeah, this being a wizard town, they don't sell a whole lot of weapons and type stuff. They have some weapon, they have a smithy, so they might be able to, like, uh, boost your... What about, uh, is there, like, an armor store? Um, I wouldn't mind getting some for a Caesar myself. I mean, there's a smithy. Okay, yeah, I mean, maybe Genevieve could use something. Some tiny bird armor. You guys go to the smithy? <laughs> yes, please. Alright, you guys walk in the smithy. When you walk in the smithy, it turns out to be a wizarding arena. Hmm. <laughs> ah. And there, there are between 20 and 40 spellcasters going at it when you walk in. How do we place bets on this then? Uh, I don't even know how you guys got inside. There's a sign that says no visitors. Uh, well, obviously we're not visitors then, huh? Yeah. Yep. So you guys must have been wanting to, to see this fight. So you see this fight in, the wizard that wins the battle gets. Some sort of magic item, or weapon, mm -hmm. or weapon bonus for winning. Since it was going on, this battle's just ended between these various twenty wizards. Why are there so many wizards? That's wacky. Because right. it's a free for all battle. It's like a bunch of wizards go in, only one wizard comes out. Oh my god, that sounds insane! I think I'd die if I tried to do something like that here. So what happened to all the wizards that did not win? Are they, like, dead? They lost. I mean, they're not all dead. Some of them might be. I mean, it's magic. Some magic is so much. It depends on, like, which wizard killed them and how that wizard... Or defeated them and how that wizard defeated them. Some of them got sent to other dimensions. Some of them died. Some of them were just injured. Some of them just got knocked out. Like, you know, oh, whatever it took to win the battle. This sounds a bit too risky for me to want to yeah. battle with. This sounds awful. Uh, uh, yeah, but you guys, you guys really saw, scary. you guys saw Wizard Fight Club, and you're like, fuck that shit. Yeah. I'm like, ah, this is really intense. Yeah. Um, that's why there's a sign that says no visitors. That's why. I was Ask you guys walked in the wrong door. Bet. They uh, assume, I mean, the reason that this is in the smithy is because wizards don't use weapons or armor, and so to walk in the smithy is a joke. Like, this is like... That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. They, wizards don't use weapons or armor. There is nothing like that here. The smithy is the arena where they show up and fight each other. This is their fight club. So, yeah, I'll ask, like, a fifth time. Is there any way to, like, bet on fights here? No. Okay. You get something out of it if you win. If not, you just get beat up. God, you that hang out with other wizards. It's a wizard club. I mean, I got magic. But Live by the magic, die by the magic. That's what they say. Like that. okay. There's a lot of wizards in town, man. Uh, yeah, I'll say that you guys want to meet some of the wizards that just uh, came out of this battle. So you guys walked in on a Can battle. Can we like go and congratulate the winner? Can I do that? Yeah. Be like, yeah. You're such a badass. That was so fucking crazy. It's roll. amazing that you just like beat down 39 other wizards. I need to roll to see which guy won. Killer, Killer Michael Mike. won. Yeah. Oh man. Killer Michael. Bard wizard, man. He was shredding some licks. He's a wizard of the death domain, man. He plays death metal and kills other wizards with his death metal music. He plays his death metal loot. It's like really sick, fast licks and just fucking murders people. He won this battle. Wow. A, lot, a lot of deaths. So what kind of cool A couple shit wizards, a couple wizards did make it out alive. Oh, he got a new magical item that he, a random one. It's just, he's probably gonna sell it. Well, it wasn't something he wanted. He just did it because he wanted to kill some dudes. Oh, wow. It's, it seems, to you, it seems like a really decent magical item, but he's just like, I'm gonna pawn it. I don't care. 
Wait, what is it? Maybe I want to buy it from you. What is it? He got a cubic gate die. Uh, what's it do, dude? What's it do, dude? Doo doo. <laughs> so yeah, it's like a small cube, like the size of a die, made of like this orange rock, six sided, and each side is key to a different plane of existence. Wowzer! So how much would you like? Since you don't even care about this, like, how much do you want to just like throw it away for? He's like, I don't know, it's pretty magical stuff, man. You know, it's a pretty hard item to get your hands on. But you didn't even care about it. You were like, I'm just gonna He's like, it. whatever, Death's my master. He's like, if you really want it, I'll let it go for like 150 gold. Uh, can I totes get up on that? I'll give you 150 right now for that. No problem. That way you don't even have to bother walking to the pawn shop. Do you have a Planewalker pass? Because I can tell you right now that they're pretty awful. Yeah, oh, he does. He's a wizard. Play. Wizards have plane walker. Lots of wizards have plane walker paths. He's like, yeah, I've been to lots of other planes. He's like, I don't know why I'd want to open a plane randomly. That seems dangerous and stupid. He's like, this yeah. is like a gambling thing. He's like, this is, seems like for someone that's willing to risk it. He's like, I'm, I'm into death, but I'm into dying. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. But is it the kind of thing that you can like trick somebody else into doing it and then like gets rid of them, or do you like roll it like a dice? Like a what? You roll it like a dice. So if I can get somebody oh, else to awesome. roll it like that a dice, then the person who rolls it is the person that like disappears to this other plane. All right, can I give him 150 gold for that? Yeah. Sweet, I'll take it. I'm gonna open up my bank of many planes wallet and peel him off 150 gold coins. Then. And also, I'm thinking that I could resell this motherfucker for like billions of dollars to the right person. Yeah, you could. Some of them wants to explore their planes, so you can find the right person. I mean, a lot of people are interested in that. This guy is just not. I know, but there are some people. Mm hmm. Alright. Cool. Can I, like. Yeah, congratulations again on your win. That was really badass. You're. Are you, like, fighting again soon or something? Or? Yeah, he fights here all the time, man. You're really good at this. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, you want to meet some other wizards that fought that didn't die? Yeah, sure. Alright, there's Bob the Closet Wizard. What does that mean? He's like a shitty door lord, but then only has access to closets. You remember you know, that door lord? <laughs> He's like a level one door lord. You can only open doors to closets. A couple hedge wizards are there, a lot of them with the plant domain. Do we recognize any of the hedge wizards? No, these are these seem to be like slightly higher level hedge wizards than those guys. Those so guys seem guys to be like, the, to like work Yeah, they have to like door. work the front door, exactly. Okay. These guys that have made it up like one rank from that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a bunch of those guys. Like that's like the weakest thing of that's like the weakest level wizard you can be as hedge wizards. It's the when you're deciding what school you want to go into, that's like the bottom uh, bottom barrel wizard. So they're like the tech school guys. Yeah, yeah. To uh, well, there's Unky Unky the Yard Wizard. Okay. Who is the master of plant and tool magic? Oh hey, I like plant magic. What's yeah, up, dude? He's good at yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's good at I'm yards. I'm to have a fuck ton of plant spells. He's more more by like yard maintenance and plant maintenance, but yeah, he's, he likes plants. So why plants. are you in an arena with like magic like that? Like what kind oh, of? Oh, you know, it's, do you it's do? fun. It's wizards. Wizards like battling each other. He are never. You not really, he just does die? it for the sport. He does it for the sport. Maybe one day he'll win and get. You just never know how it's gonna go. It's a the wizard battle. Huh. Sometimes like I do a survive. You know, he didn't die this time, so yeah. Well, I mean, he fought it. He fought a death wizard and didn't die. There's Sean, the wizard mixologist. <laughs> he usually makes crazy potions and bombs. He also makes great drinks, so if you want to Oh my god, can I talk to Sean, the potion wizard? I have, like, all kinds of crazy random things. Yeah, he says come visit him at his bar. He'll mix them up for you. Excellent. What's your... What, so you work at that only... The only bar that's in town, right? Yeah. Sweet. Are you going like, to go in there now? Like, can we talk? Can I, like, show you... Yeah, yeah, he's going to work. Do you want to, like, come to the bar? Yeah, I got a bunch of, like, random stuff, and I'd love for you to tell me the if any of this can be made into any, like... Uh, like yeah, you can show you can show those to this guy. Yeah, he'll say yeah. Bring him my job. Bring him, bring him by the bar. I'll mix you something up with that. Killer. Yeah, we can. I'll totally like, yeah. pay you and stuff. You just no have to come to his fancy bar. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's some other wizards there. Meet them too before you go to this bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean there's Roos the game wizard who owns Roos's games and toys. He's really good with balls. He does a lot of ball magic. He's basically a juggling wizard. Uh, there's Larry the laser wiz. He does like light and laser spells. There's a guy who calls himself the Brain Wizard. He's a local trivia host, also works at that local bar. Master of Mind Spells. Trivia host? Yep. You meet Wendy the Wizard. Aw, hey. Master of Flying and Wind Spells. Yeah. Wind, huh? You meet the Sorcerer of Sex, who immediately tries to hit on both of you. Master of the Charmed Remain. Trickery, too. You're not sure if you just got a hand job or not, Alec, but maybe you did. What about me? You probably also got a hand job. Ooh. And then there's Dale mm -hmm. of the Dark, who's the Fetchling Shadow Wizard. You know, who's hiding in the back, you didn't see him. But he kind of came out and shook your hand, very quiet. Uh, you meet Thunk. 
Orc Wizard, a very rare breed. Not a lot of Orc Wizards out there, but Master of the Destruction Domain, so it kind of fits him. Uh, he seems to have smashed up a lot of stuff in the arena during the part that you watched. A lot of destruction caused by Thunk. Sounds like something a Thunk would do. You meet Watlock, who is the Law Wizard. Watlock? Watlock, the Law Wizard. He's an old man, but he's the Master of the Law Domain. Uh, you meet Crazy Carl, who's ma Master of the Madness Domain. He's a really wacky old dude. And you also meet the Bronze Wizard, who's like super tan. <laughs> Master of the Sun Domain. All these guys are leaving their wizard battle, high fiving each other. Good, good battle, guys. Only Killer Michael's like, yeah, more of you guys should have died, but I guess, I guess I could need to get better at death magic. He's really upset this many people lived, but this is who lived through the battle, and you guys have now met. You guys are all going to the bar to enjoy drinks together. Yeah, cool. Let's go to the after party. Yeah, so they all notice you're new in town. They welcome you to, you know, your first time to Faux C, huh? Yep. Oh, uh, welcome to Faux C, guys. Man, cool. cool to meet you, man. Yeah, and they buy you drinks, of course. They buy you some of their local Seuel brew, Wizard's Punch. What it is? What's it going to do to me? I mean, do you drink it? I don't know. Can I ask him what it does first? I mean, you can. Say, get you drunk, man. I already drank mine. Yeah, see? He's one step out of you. you know, he's gonna ask him questions. You don't go to a bar and be like, What does this do to me when I drink it? But there's this, things if I drink this for now, will I die from it? <laughs> You're in a bar, you don't, you, these people are buying you a drink. Fine, whenever, I'll take it. I'll just drink it. We join our friend Aristophocles. Aristophocles wakes up in a hotel room. A strange hotel room. Not the same place he fell asleep. Uh, you wake up sort of groggy, it takes you a minute to figure out what's going on. You want to roll a perception check to look around, around you? Now that you realize you're in a strange place? You know like when you wake up, like when you were a kid and you would fall asleep and your parents would carry you indoors or something and then you'd wake up and be like, right. where am I, where am I at? It's like that. You're waking up, you're not sure where you are, you're, you're, not, you're on a bed, uh, but you're not sure of your surroundings. This is definitely not a room you're used to. You don't remember falling asleep here, but here you are. Strange. Yeah. So perception me to see what's going on around you as you wake Twelve. up. Twelve. Twelve, so not great. You still have a sleep in your eyes, uh, but you do realize you're in a hotel room. A strange hotel room. Uh, you don't recognize very much. You're in a bed. It's a very small room, very plain. Not a whole lot going on. Bare bones type of hotel room. Anybody around me? Roll me another perception check. Seven. All right, you go back to sleep. <laughs> you sort of drift back off into dreamland for a little while. You got like 15 more minutes. You hit, this, you hit the snooze button. <laughs> okay. Roll me a third one. That's cool. Three. Man, you're just determined to sleep today, aren't you? Uh, yeah. You hear some, here's what happens, you hear some noise, you hear like a, some like, you hear someone come in the door, you hear like a row, like a fight, you hear some noise, you, you just roll over, like put the pillow over your head, you roll over and go back to sleep, you try to ignore the noise. Wow. Okay. You can roll another one to wake up again, you gotta wake up sooner or later. So 20. 20? Uh, that's a good perception. So with that, uh, you look around the room, uh, you see Kit and Jacques. Passed out on the floor, it looks like they got in a fight, and they're still kind of like slumped over each other, like they passed, like they were fighting, and they they were fighting so hard they passed out, like fighting, basically. Uh, you'll, you'll also notice around them on the floor, uh, some pornographic images of Kit. Of Kit with a bunch of other races, other species of, of creatures, other races of humanoids, uh, in, in sexual congress of some variety. What the fuck? Yeah, so Kit was apparently yeah, like, yeah, Kit, Kit was getting freaky with some other races apparently. There was uh, four or five pictures laying around the room of Kit getting down one way or another with some other race of species in this game. Uh, Who was so, taking these pictures? You don't know. You just woke up. But you see Kit and Jock passed out, and you see this porn all over the floor with Kit involved in the porn. Uh, you're, in a, you're in a strange hotel room, you don't know where. You're still obviously in the desert, it's easy to see out your window that you're still in like a small desert town. You hear some gunshots and a lot of like ruckus in the background. So whatever area you're in is obviously a rough and tumble type of area. What about on my immediate person? Is there anything unusual? Yeah, all about me or bed I'm lying in? No, no, you, you're just, uh, you seem to have been, uh, seems like they carried you into bed and tucked you in nicely, everything, all of your belongings are there. No one seems to have messed with you, they seem to have just, like, left you in this room. And then gotten in a fight and passed out. So they're kind of like, they didn't even make it to a bed. You're nice and tucked into bed, they're, like, on the floor, like, look like, look like they, like, got in a fight and passed out fighting. And this stuff's strewn over the room, so the room's kind of a mess. Uh, 
Is just Kit and Jock in there with me? Just Kit, Jock, and you, yep. Huh. Is they they seem injured? Are they in trouble? Uh, Kit seems more injured than Jock. Can I, I go and examine him? Yeah, yeah, you can roll a heal check to an examine him. Yeah. Yoey. Eleven. So not a great heal check. Uh, you know, Kit's unconscious. Uh, let's say, I mean, you've seen Jock, you've seen Jock sleep for long periods of time before. So if he was passed out for a long time, you wouldn't be worried. Although uh, Kit, Kit also seems kind of unresponsive. Like, you shook Jock and he didn't wake up, you're like, oh, you know, I've seen that guy sleep for days at a time. Obviously, okay. he's under some sort of magic compulsion of sleep. But Kit, it's kind of strange, he's un unresponsive also. So you might, you don't, you don't know what's wrong with him, anything like that. He doesn't seem bloodied or damaged. I mean, if it's, if, it, if he is injured, it's internally. You can't see any signs of injury. Uh, but okay. he's definitely passed out and not waking up. So okay. Jacques and Kit, unresponsive to you when you shake them, try to wake them, things like that. Well, I think I want to say a prayer. To whom are you praying? I'm going to pray to Gojra because I haven't done that in a long time. You pray to the god of nature. What do you say? Bless me for this day I'm about to embark on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Woke up in a strange place. So Protect me in my journey type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is more of a uh, therapeutic kind of... Meditation you know, type of prayer. This yeah, is more like a ritual yeah. prayer. You're not like speaking from the heart. You're reciting a, a, a verse. Yeah. Yeah. You recite the Gozra hymn, the Gozra prayer. It's in all the prayer books. Thanks for the trees. Thanks. Yo, it's good night moon. You you, you recite good night moon uh, to yourself. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, awesome. talk, you, you mention the trees and the birds and the bees. Hey, Brian, can I, uh, can I play with my puzzle box? Yeah, of course. Uh, you whip out your puzzle box, which looks like a Rubik's Cube. Yeah, where's Billy, my dragon? Billy's always with you, man. He's like your pet cat. He sleeps on your neck, he curls on your leg. Unless you tell him to go somewhere, he's with you. Well, I roll for the puzzle box. So I believe I that was a wisdom check to unlock it. Can I roll a couple times? You may. Or you can take a 20. If you roll, you're trying to do it faster. But if you take a 20, it will succeed, but it will take longer. I'll roll for it. Alright, risk it. So you get you whip the puzzle box out. You start Rubik's cube. You twist one edge, twist the other edge, twist the top, twist the bottom. Try to get all the yeah. colors to match. Five. And you have mixed up all the colors. So you now have like one of each color on every side. You don't know. It's cool. It's you think cool. you, you think it's you might have enough. you might have made it worse. But as far as puzzles like this go, you might have made it better. It's hard to tell. You can try again. Okay. Yeah, I'll try again. Seventeen. That's better. So you spent an hour the first time fucking it up. You spend an hour this time, uh, and you've got like that thing when you do a Rubik's cube, but like there's one there's one color. It's like oh, I've got the, I got one white square yeah. surrounded by red squares. Yeah. You you have that going on. You have like all right, all right. you have eight red squares, one white square type of thing. Let's do it again. Uh, eight. Yeah, you fucked it up again, man. You spent another hour. And just, you figured like I'll start. I'll get it. I'll mess it up again like I did last time. Cause I got so close. You just like re fuck it up. So you're in for you're in for three hours of just Rubik's cubing right now, in a room. Let's keep it going. In a room full of porno and passed out dudes, you're just like Rubik's cube, Rubik's cube, Rubik's cube. <laughs> I don't know how else to cope with such. Yeah, yeah. You're like I don't want to. You don't want to mess with them. You don't want to touch them. You don't want to touch that porn. <laughs> yeah, it's still too late to take a twenty. You can still take a twenty. If you take a twenty, it's gonna take you four more hours. So you basically will spend eight hours. You spend a whole day just fucking waiting for these guys to wake up and playing with your Rubik's cube. At the end of the four hours, you do manage to unlock it. You figure out the puzzle. The box opens. A tiny fairy comes out. Billy eats the fairy. Um, nice. um, it's Billy's favorite food. I think he purrs. He's like a cat dragon. Um, and curls around your neck and hugs you and loves you and licks your face or whatever. He's very pleased. Yeah. You're a good owner. He'll telepathically share thoughts with you. He'll, you know, he can think to you. So he'll say thank you or whatever. We'd like to thank you for listening or whatever. So gather your friends and tune in for another hundred episodes of Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater.